But the first tour I ever did for Ace was Haydn. And that was very lovely to be walking on the floorboards that Haydn had walked in the concert hall and to be greeted by trumpeters as we came to the concert room, to the castle, it was a castle, Eisenstadt. That was all amazing. Went into the Stephansdom. Within about six minutes, I was playing the Stephansdom organ. <laughs> it was quite embarrassing because all the, there were about six sets of guides all taking people around the cathedral. And one of them just about swallowed her thing like an ice cream out of shock when the organ suddenly played out. So those were very special times, those early visits to to Haydn Festival for me, the first two tours I ever did. And now I think I've reached about 112 or something like that. I had two grandfathers who were both amateur musicians. One played the double bass and that eventually I used, I played that as a teenager and got into the National Youth Orchestra, which helped to get to Cambridge, I'm sure. Um, because all, everybody was there, say Mark Elder, David Pountney, they were all in, this, you know, in the same orchestra and all here together later. But my other grandfather was a minister in the Church of Scotland, all over the place, Church of Scotland, Presbyterian Church of England too. And um, he liked entertaining at the piano um, and he played the clarinet. So those genes must have come down. Um, and my father used to sing us to sleep as children. There were two sisters and me. He would sing us sea shanties because he was in the Navy during the war and then in the reserve after that. And so that was lovely. The organ is a huge machine. The piano is a smaller machine and a highly sensitive one. The organ has got so much that you've got to be a bit like a pilot, an airline pilot. You've got to be watching everything all the time. And this, you're listening to the sound which is going out way beyond you, but you're also feeling an instrument. And so to get to grips, literally to grips with the instrument, uh, takes time. Mozart flashed into my mind as you were saying that too. Of course, I mean, gosh, imagine being at a concert with Mozart. I often think when, again, I keep saying about Vienna, but we were in Vienna one day and I really felt that Mozart could easily, could easily about seconds before the mass was going to begin, come running up the aisle, you know, late, dashing in. Um, that's one thought. And then the other thought was to be present at in the, the great church where Bach was playing. I mean, that must have been un incredible because Bach is just, well, he sets one up. But certainly for me, Bach is, settles you down. He's just goodness and sympathy and, uh, and beauty and incredible intricacy, which just flows without you dis noticing almost unless you start, to un you start to investigate it and you just think, gosh, that's clever. And I still find that when I think, gosh, I know what's coming next, I still get surprises. In Salzburg, one of my group said, John, there's someone very famous standing next to you. And I looked around, I couldn't see any, but a young cellist. Uh, and she said, no, no, there. And it was Daniel Barenboim, whom we'd heard uh, the night before playing Mozart D minor in the uh, festival hall there with the, perhaps the Vienna Phil, it must have been. I said how much we'd enjoyed the concert. Then we both set off in uh, off the pavement and suddenly he realized that there was still a red van up there, that the traffic was likely to come any minute and he grabbed my arm and pulled us both back. And I said, oh, we mustn't die together. And he said, neither together nor, nor, nor singly. So it's a nice phrase that Daniel Barenboim saved my life. Cambridge has always been a sort of beloved place. Um, apparent, I mean, I, it all started when I was 14 and my examiner was in grade seven of piano in the room in Edinburgh, my teacher's room. He was George Guest, who was here at St. John's for so many years. And he said, he said, I want to see this boy's father. And he recommended that um, I did the scholarship exam, you know, when I was 16 and 17 and 18, so I got it. And bitterly called, December and I was staying over the Bridge of Sighs, bitterly cold. Um, and of course I just fell in love with the place, that great Tudor gateway. I arrived and I just looked up and gasps. And so to come back all these years later is utterly beautiful. <laughs>